Good afternoon. For today's video lecture, I will be doing a review and recap of one of the movies from our list of five Vietnam films, and that movie is Platoon. I'm starting with Platoon because I feel like this will probably be one of the movies that most of you watch, considering that it is on Netflix. Um, it's also a very popular film. I think it's a film that many people in general know about or are at least aware of. And um, it's, a, it's a more action um, style film um, in comparison to some of the other movies on the list. So to begin, I just want to read um, an excerpt from the uh, Wikipedia Platoon page. And there's some interesting bits of information here that are even new to me that I'd like to share as it gives a little bit of context to the film and, and helps us understand it better. So Stone wrote this screenplay based upon his experiences as a U.S. infantryman in Vietnam to counter the vision of the war portrayed in John Wayne's The Green Berets. Uh, Platoon was the first Hollywood film to be written and directed by a veteran of the Vietnam War. Upon its release, Platoon received critical acclaim for Stone's directing and screenplay, the cinematography, battle sequences, realism, and the performances of Defoe and Berenger. The film was nominated for eight Academy Awards and won four, including Best Picture, Best Director for Stone, Best Sound, and Best Film Editing. In 2019, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetic, aesthetically excuse me, significant. So that's a lot of information in that short little uh, opening Wikipedia paragraph about the film. Uh, to begin with, they mentioned how he, Oliver Stone was a Vietnam War vet who made this film to counter John Wayne's uh, movie, which I haven't seen, but I, without knowing much about that movie, I just take that as, um, Platoon is a pretty controversial film in terms of, um, Oliver Stone is, is revealing some hard realities and truths, at least for him, as far as the atrocities that we committed against uh, Vietnam soldiers and Vietnam civilians. And so I didn't know any of, of this about Oliver Stone um, until I was preparing to do this video lecture. And so something I always wondered as I was watching Platoon in the past was, you know, how accurate this movie is. And um, just a little bit more about Oliver Stone from my own point of view and perspective. You know, I'm pretty familiar with his films. Um, a couple of films that come to mind right now by him that I've seen are Any Given Sunday and JFK. And I bring up these movies because I feel like Oliver Stone is, is a director who in his movies is attempting to reveal the ugly truth of things. And um, he does that in Any Given Sunday, which is a football movie where there are some controversial scenes in that movie where he reflects this ugly truth about um, how football players are, are pumped full of drugs and encouraged to go out there and play and, and risk their lives and um, risk themselves to injury um, just for the sake of, of managers and owners of teams and money and profit, which a lot of it is true, interestingly enough. You know, that movie, I think, was pretty controversial about those scenes when it first came out. But now, all these years later, after it came out, all the focus on concussions now, um, the long-term effects of concussions and um, football-related injuries and trauma, you know, um, Oliver Stone was, was a little ahead of his time in pointing to some of that. Not necessarily concussions, but, you know, that kind of mentality that goes with football in general. Uh, JFK, which is a movie about uh, John F. Kennedy and his assassination in that movie, uh, he was attempting to reveal um, the truth, you know, the behind the scenes type of truth that maybe the public didn't know about that he's kind of revealing in that film. So Oliver Stone to me is this director who likes to reveal ugly truths or uh, hurtful truths or harsh realities in his films. And so Platoon is, is no exception. Um, this is a film that definitely goes out of its way to focus on the atrocities that um, we, the United States, committed against uh, Vietnamese soldiers and Vietnamese 
uh, civilians, many of them innocent civilians. And um, that film gives a different perspective and point of view in comparison to some of the other movies on the list. So back to that Wikipedia entry and saying he made this film to counter John Wayne's film, I can only assume that means that John Wayne's film was probably more of a pro United States, pro war, pro our soldiers being heroes uh, type of film. And um, it sounds like Oliver Stone, you know, wanted to make a film that he felt like was more um, accurate. And, you know, the fact that he is a Vietnam vet, you know, that makes Platoon way more interesting to me now. So I think it's important that I start with that first. So, uh, Platoon. Uh, something else that the Wikipedia entry mentions are um, performances by Tom Berenger and William Defoe. So, Tom Berenger plays Sergeant Barnes who is just the ultimate war badass, the ultimate soldier, just uh, the type of soldier that you don't want to mess with. Um, even his appearance in this movie, the scars that they give him on his face, just... <laughs> I love Tom Berenger in this movie. Um, Oliver Stone vision for, for that character, just awesome. And Tom Berenger plays that role to perfection. I'm personally a Tom Berenger fan. Um, I'm a huge fan of the movie Major League, which is a funny baseball movie. I don't know you, if you guys are familiar with that, but that movie also stars Tom Berenger and Charlie Sheen. So, um, you know, they, they have that on-screen chemistry, which is no surprise why they're in this movie together and others. Um, Tom Berenger kills it. And William Defoe. Is, is just awesome in everything, <laughs> every movie that he's ever been in. Uh, definitely a, a favorite actor of mine. And um, he, is, he is great as Elias. And so I think in, you know, reviewing or recapping or even analyzing this movie, it's important to start with those two characters because even though Charlie Sheen is technically the main character of the film, uh, Chris is technically the main character of the film, this movie is more about Sergeant Barnes and Elias. Um, it's, it's all about them, okay? And so um, something interesting about this movie is a lot of the movie focuses on the internal conflict of the platoon, where the platoon has divided itself more or less into two groups of soldiers. One group that follows the lead of Sergeant Barnes and another group that seems to be following the lead of Elias. And that in itself is interesting because neither one of them is uh, the leader of the platoon. That's another lieutenant, but um, that lieutenant is worthless. Uh, he's a terrible leader. He knows it himself. He knows he's not fit to be leader. And so, um, or excuse me, Barnes, again, being the, the ultimate badass and ultimate soldier that he is, um, the lieutenant relies on Barnes. Um, to take the lead in many situations and relies on um, Barnes' direction. And so more, for, more or less the platoon is being led by Barnes and, and also Elias. So a lot of the movie focuses on the conflict between those two and those two groups of soldiers because they represent two different types of mentalities or philosophies, you know, for looking at the war, looking how, at how a soldier should carry out their job. For Barnes and his guys, it's, it's all about survival at, at all costs, even if that inclu includes cr cruelty and committing immoral acts. Um, they are literally willing to do anything to survive, even if it, it again means doing things that are clearly crossing the line or things that we could consider, you know, just deplorable or completely immoral. Um, Elias, on the other hand, represents a bit different, a bit of a different uh, mentality where Elias is, is all about survival at all costs as well, just as much as Barnes, but he wants to go about it in a way where um, he still values humanity or um, he, he can still, you know, look at himself in the mirror at night. So you have those two characters, those two uh, groups of soldiers following them at odds, um, in conflict, and um, Charlie Sheen's character, Chris, at one point in the movie even says that they are at civil war. And so um, I just want to highlight one scene in particular, which for me embodies 
um, what this film is really all about. And again, goes back to some of the things I mentioned earlier in addressing um, some of the parts of the Wikipedia entry, is that, again, Oliver Stone, I think, clearly wants to reflect some of the atrocities that, that we committed against the Vietnamese. He, he wants to do this in a way I feel like that is kind of like revealing this harsh reality, this ugly truth that he may have seen or experienced and probably did um, in his own time as a soldier in the Vietnam War. And the, the scene in particular that's the most important scene in the movie that embodies that is when the platoon comes across the Vietnamese village as civilians. And before they get to this village, they come across one of their fellow soldiers who has been brutally killed and he's like hanging on a post for them to see, to make a display of the killing. And the camera focuses on Barnes' face and he just has the look of a guy that is about to go off, that has just had it up to here and is just willing to do whatever it takes at this point to to avenge that loss and so he's already irate before they get to this village and when they get to this village they come across um, some weapons that appear to be hidden um, which leads him to believe that they're helping the the nva the enemy and so he goes off he he he's at 100 he's kicking ass and taking names, so to speak, trying to get information from these civilians who he believes are, are helping the enemy. And he's shooting people and going crazy. While this is going on, another group uh, led by Chris is, is inside a little hut and they come across this kid that's hiding underground. A kid and his mom appears to be there too. And Chris is barking orders at this Vietnamese kid, and it looks like the Vietnamese kid doesn't even understand what he's saying. Obviously, um, he's scared, and um, he's just having a hard time responding, and, and Chris loses it. It's, it's kind of a turning point in the movie for Chris as a character, um, where he just seems to have um, let the war has finally like gotten to him. And he goes off shouting, why aren't you listening to me? Why are you laughing at me? He starts shooting at the ground at his feet, trying to get him to dance, you know, that typical like movie cliche where they, they, they do that. And, and Chris finally is, is able to calm down after losing it for a moment. And he wants to get out of the hut. But another one of the soldiers in the group, who we already know from earlier in the movie is just an asshole. Um, <laughs> He, he wants to stay and continue to, you know, go back at this kid who he feels like at this point they need to do something to him now. And so what he decides to do is he decides to kill him and he kills him pretty brutally with the, the butt of his rifle to the shock of, of all the guys in the group. You could just tell they, they, you could see on their face, they actually feel awful about this outside of the asshole who, who kills this kid and from there we cut back to uh, Barnes who is who is still going crazy and now he's decided to talk to this one guy who appears to be the leader in the village and he's screaming at him to give him information um, this man's wife becomes hysterical and she starts shouting at Barnes and at this point, Barnes decides to kill this Vietnamese man's wife. He shoots her in the head. And at this point, I've seen Platoon before, and I already know what's going to happen, but in, <laughs> inside my mind, I'm just saying, please, Elias, get out here and stop this man, because I can't watch any more of this. It's just a very hard scene to watch. Again, back to... Um, Oliver Stone, I think, wanting to reflect some of the ugly truth and nature of the war, and so, some of which was which was carried out by us. Um, I think this scene really embodies that. So thank God, Elias, hearing the commotion, 
Um, what, what finally gets Elias to rush out is, is Barnes decides to take a little girl, a little Vietnamese girl, and he grabs her and he holds a gun to her head and he threatens to, to shoot her if they don't give him the answers he's looking for. And then Elias, thank God, <laughs> rushes out, um, fights with Barnes, gets the girl away. They get into a huge fight. Um, and then afterward, you know, they, they have a talk with their superior and the superior says how if he finds out that there was any wrongful killing that happened that day, there's going to be a court martial. And then that really sets the stage for the rest of the events that that follow in the film is, is you can see it coming, you know, um, especially when they're the other guys are asking Barnes about what happened with their superior and if there was going to be a court martial you could tell Barnes isn't going to let that happen so um, events un unfold and in the movie more or less toward the end they're in an ambush Elias goes off on his own um, they need to retreat Elias is still left behind and Barnes uh, tells Chris who is adamant about we got to go get Elias we got to go get Elias um, Barnes tells Chris no, I'm gonna go after him he needs to go back and and Chris already knows something's up you know we we watching the movie we know what's gonna happen so um, Barnes finds Elias he sees his opportunity um, Elias is coming out of the jungle towards Barnes and Barnes shoots Elias kills him well he thinks he kills him <laughs> Um, that, that's a pretty crazy uh, scene, too. What follows um, is, you know, we all think Elias is dead. And so Barnes goes back. He, he finds Chris. Chris asks where Elias is, and he says he's dead. And, and Chris is suspicious. Are you sure you saw him? Yeah, I saw him. We need to go. And so they, they leave. The choppers take him away. And as the helicopter is taking Chris and Barnes away, they see Elias running, gunshot wounds and all from Barnes, um, running through the jungle and all these Vietnamese soldiers running after him. And eventually they shoot him down. Very iconic scene where William Defoe holds his arms up. That's a, that's a very iconic movie scene in, in cinema history. You might have seen that before. And then uh, Chris, of course, looks over at Barnes and, you know, Chris knows that, that Barnes obviously lied and that, you know, Barnes left him for dead or tried to kill him either way. So um, that's that's Platoon. Platoon, again, um, really interesting, you know, to watch that movie now that I know what I do about Oliver Stone, which I shared with you at the beginning of the lecture. Um I think it, it makes it makes this movie better for me. It takes the credibility of the movie up a notch because I know when I had seen this movie before, you, you watch it and you think, well, you know, Oliver Stone is just exaggerating here and, you know, it wasn't quite like that. You know, which, which directors tend to do whether they're telling the truth or not. But um, now that I know that he's a vet and, you know, how recognized this film is for even according to the Wikipedia page, it's realism, um, it's, it's aesthetic value, um, the recognition of the film, the credibility of Stone as a director. Um, it definitely makes Platoon, I think, a, a Vietnam movie worth watching. Um, I know it, it, it can be a harsh watch at times because it's so violent and it's so ugly at times and just um, revealing the, the true horror evil nature of war um, but again like I said knowing what I do now about Oliver Stone makes it a much more interesting and incredible film for me and, and I, I've enjoyed watching it more the second time around knowing those things all right um, I hope you you enjoyed the film if you watched it too um, I hope you're enjoying the other films on the list which I'm going to get to in, in video lectures to follow and as far as your assignment is concerned um, feel free to write that however you see fit. If, if you want to do um, an analysis similar to what I just gave, maybe focusing on individual scenes, some of the themes or symbols in the movie. I didn't even get to some of the other themes, which I guess I can mention briefly now. 
Um, drug use. Drug use was a big theme, I think, in this movie as well. Um, Elias and his group, um, they're looked at as potheads by the other soldiers. We're at night. Um, Elias and his group of guys, um, they like to smoke marijuana and and uh, one of the little tents that they have out there while the other group of guys is like playing cards and they're kind of a bit more on the straight straight and narrow as far as drugs are concerned. Um, so that's, that, that's definitely a theme in the movie too. Um, at one point, one of the other soldiers tells Charlie Sheen that uh, Chris, that he needs, he's been smoking too much uh, marijuana and it's affecting him. So um, I think that was a the theme of the movie, you know, drug use as, as a way to cope uh, with the war for the soldiers and even leading to soldiers becoming addicted to certain drugs. I know um, you see that theme in a lot of literature and movies on the Vietnam War. Um, other interesting things about Platoon 2 off the top of my head that I just thought of, the, the other actors in the film, something that's interesting for me is, I mean, I'm kind of a Charlie Sheen fan. I, I'm a 90s kid, so I, I grew up with him in some movies, Major League I mentioned earlier, but I never thought he was the best actor. And it's interesting, you know, that he is the, the lead role in this movie with some of the other actors um, in this movie, for example, Johnny Depp, who is a young Johnny Depp, who's probably not an established actor at this point. But I was just thinking like, wow, Johnny Depp is just this side character in this movie. Like, this movie would have been so much better if Johnny Depp was the lead. Like, it's just funny to, to see um, this moment in time. You know, Charlie Sheen is seen as um, more of a marquee actor than Johnny Depp, who's still up and coming. Forrest Whitaker in the movie, who is outstanding actor. Um, I wish I would have seen him with a larger role in this. Um, but uh, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Uh, hope you enjoy the film. As far as your responses go, I'm just looking for a 500 word or more response. I'm willing to take those even into Thanksgiving break. Um, I'm also willing to give extra credit if you write additional responses for some of the other movies on the list. Um, I know it's probably a bit hard to watch five Vietnam films, but um, at least they give different views and perspectives, different approaches um, to expressing the war in these movies. Like again, this one, um, Platoon from Oliver Stone, um, kind of show war through the perspective of the horrible things that we've done. Um, Deer Hunter, which I'm going to cover in the next lecture, that has a different kind of the opposite perspective about some of the atrocities that we experienced, that our soldiers experienced and how we were affected by them. Um, a bit more of a positive movie. I wouldn't call it a positive movie, but um, definitely some more positive moments um, in that one for sure. Different uh, movie for sure. So um, anyway, again, hope you're enjoying the movies and, and this assignment. And um, I'll see you in the next lecture where I cover Deer Hunter.